Hello, everybody. I'm here with Claire Dale from Physical Intelligence. How are you today, Claire? Hey, I'm really good. Thanks, Justin. Great uh, to be it's, here. It's good to see you again. I'm really excited about the topic and the interview around physical intelligence. So many people forget that the brain is part of the body. And anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm really interested to know more about the work that you're doing within the NPN Hub and focusing on physical intelligence. So, you know, maybe start off with your story, Claire, into this niche environment in um, applied neuroplasticity and tell us about your road to Mecca or wherever the <laughs> road is taking us. Well, thanks, Justin, for this opportunity to talk about this incredible thing uh, called the body, the whole body that, as you said, right. to includes the brain. Uh, it's an amazing technology and neurotransmitters and hormones are released in our muscles, in our bones, in every cell of our bodies, as well as in our brains. And so really thinking about this as a whole organism is very important when we start to think about neuroplasticity. So the, the story from my personal perspective is that I was once a dancer and a choreographer having danced from very early on in my life. The body was always my fasc fascination. And when I came to finish my choreographic career, I was making contemporary dance works and touring them around internationally. When I'd done what I needed to do there, I knew that the body needed to have a, a much more central role in leadership, in culture, um, and in, in really any place that I could find to uh to, to influence and and bring the body to life for people who wouldn't necessarily think about how they're using their bodies so i created an organization called companies in motion and now we've created an organization called the physical intelligence institute and we're, we're now creating a hub within the neuroplasticians institute all about the incredible technology of the body and how the way we use our body impacts how we think, how we feel, how we speak, and how we behave. Mm. And I've been studying neurophysiology all my life, and we've now created a set of tools that coaches, educators can use to introduce others to the body and to coach with the body as part of our neuroplastic um, equipment. Very good. Coaching with the body in mind. Maybe there's a jingle in there somewhere, Claire, but your your work is so, I don't know, it's so impressive. I think that's the word. Um, your your textbook being an award-winning uh, piece of academic literature, um, the fact that you're doing your, your PhD with us at Middlesex, the fact that you are leading the thinking in how the neurophysiology informs not only our thinking, but our experience. I mean, I love the fact that in our in our neurological uh, <clears throat> discussions around uh, different topics, you uh, you encourage us to have a break in the discussion so that we can all stretch our bodies and remind our mind that it is part of a technology that isn't unavailable. You know, we 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 don't have an option to to not use our bodies and. I really would like you to tell us a bit about your 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 philosophy around the work that you're researching. You're you're doing so much interesting work in your PhD, and I'd really just like to have a, a shallow dive into it. We're in the NPN Hub. We're not um, doing academic research, but we're looking for that academic bias based on the research. So you fit the role beautifully, Claire. You. <laughs> covering both sides so let me stop talking and let me ask you to just give us a shallow dive into your approach and your thinking in the physical intelligence institute and how people can learn more in the hub yes well there's so much to say about yeah there is the the you know the the future application mm. of a better understanding of the neurotransmission the nervous systems as they operate mm. in the body. And um, I think it's probably 
good to give a few examples and think Brilliant. about some of the some of the chemistry that is flowing between mm. um, the brain and the body throughout the the nervous systems. Mm. You know, um, to me, maybe if you don't mind me, we we're, we have a community of experts and practitioners as neuroplasticians, and you know they want to learn the stuff that they can mm. use in their practice. So your examples are monumental and brilliant. But you now let's speak into the lens of the practitioner and how they can. Uh, hack the techniques that you've given us so that we can get the benefit for the client experience in the coaching or practitioner journey. I don't know, have you got a couple of examples like that you can share maybe, Claire? Yes, yes. So uh, first of all, one of my particular lenses through which I'm looking at this work for my doctorate mm -hmm. is is the function of the well the serotonergic function function so uh on, on the top level most of us know the things about well-being and happiness that serotonin is responsible for but what many of us don't really understand yet is that it's also plays a part in the suppleness of the connective tissue between the muscle mm, and the bone so the very flexibility in our bodies leads to another function of 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 create of uh, serotonin and flexibility which is our creativity and it's so really important today in the world as we that we live in where you know we, we're talking about the environment being brittle and anxious and this in this circumstance the body closes down along with the entire nervous system um, and tensions arise, which means that our serotonin levels suffer. So if we can bring them back through movement, we become neuroplastically must, much more able to access our creative functions in the brain mm -hmm. um, and as they tra transmit throughout our whole nervous systems. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. another great example yeah. is the dopaminergic function, which that of course is so important as a neurotrans neurotransmitter in the brain. Um, and one amazing fact is that the inner ear and the balance mechanism tells us how we can learn it, it, it it's part of whether we're in a learning state or not and whether we're in a state where we can change or not so some recent research is telling us that if we if we take our heads off the vertical or we invert the spine um so that or, or we shift our weight so that we're in a more off balance body stance for a little while we release dopamine we release uh more adrenaline more acetylcholine because of the inner ear connections with the cerebellum at the back of the brain and this opens up the potential for learning change in our whole selves mm. so the so, body is, coach, is leading so. our state the body is often leading our state mm. not I mean, the brain with, with your coaches do you give them tools that they can use in the coaching process so that they can get into the right uh, headspace with the clients. Yeah. And I, I know that I was just stretching my neck like that. Um, and I was doing it unconsciously because I noticed, obviously, at an unconscious level that it gives a felt sense of benefit. Um, it, you know, it just feels nice to have that, that, that displacement, if that's the, the right word. So, you know, what, what, can a, what can a coach or a practitioner do in session to get the benefit of their physical intelligence to improve the learning or the understanding or the memory or the development or whatever the topic might be, Claire? Mm. Well, the key thing is to learn how to use movement mm. and the body, different stances, different breath patterns, uh, different types and of dynamic movement for specific purposes and i think what you've what you've done there is just hit hit the nail on the head we 
often we'll move and we'll have a felt sense that this is beneficial, but we don't really know why or what. And as coaches, we need mm. to know that mechanism if we're going to use it um, credibly and accurately. So one example might be, um, you know, many people will know that much of our serotonin in our entire system is manufactured and released in the gut. Uh, mm -hmm. And the recent research around the, the gut microbiome and how the serotonin can transmit and change our mood via the vagus nerve. All this research is opening up incredibly mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, and there, it is true that, that the serotonin release in the neurons in the enteric brain in the gut are, are stimulated by mechanical movement that we do. And part of that would be peristalsis, the move, the natural movement of the gut. But mm -hmm. another would be a twisting action from the center of the body, like you might do in a movement class or a yoga class. But what we're talking about here is coaches noticing that a client might be stuck or we keep coming back to the same question. It coach seems me through it. Co coach me on. through it, Claire. I mean, oh, well. I just had something to eat. So does that, ma does that matter? Or does that like help or does it invade in the protocol? Um, no, it just means you've got both things going. You've got some peristalsis going and you also would add to that a gentle okay. twist and our body will okay. tell us if it's not right okay. for us. So um, the, you know, the, the, the thing about working with our clients is knowing that if there's a sense of stuckness, a specific movement that moves this very uh, important area of the body, the enteric brain and stimulates it is a solution. And you can expect that after giving a twist, which I will coach you through now, you can expect a different thought process to emerge. You can spe expect a different felt emotional experience of being in the context that the client's talking about and therefore greater creativity, greater solution finding. So here's, um, here's, here's a thing. I mean, it's, it's actually incredibly simple, beautifully simple in the best way. But if you find a grounding wherever you are, if you're seated, just place your, you know, make sure you're, you've got good support underneath you, underneath you and your feet are on the ground and you're well seated in your chair. Um, and then what you want to do is just feed your arms around one way. So the back arm goes around the back and you can turn your head. Try and keep your knees and hips facing forwards and use your hands to lever yourself around a little. And take a breath because the breath stimulates the gut as well through the movement. Then you can go to the other side, feeding the arms round looking over your shoulder, breathing. And if comfortable, you can lever yourself a little bit further round <laughs> and come back. And then if you like that, you can just gently, depending on what your recent lunch or breakfast is telling you, you can gradually let that become a, 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 a quicker twist with a bit more flow breath going from side to side and then when you come back and you come back to where you were and you tune in to the data that's coming from the body it feels like it, it, it often feels like there's a bit more space for the breath, for one thing. Mm, there's a, lot there's a little bit more movement. More, more, there's a lot more, more energy going on for me. So energy release. And then if you, if you look, I mean, we say that we can't feel what's going on in the brain, but certainly with our awareness of the activity of the head that's going on in the head, where we would tend to think, that some of the mind is very active. The mind, of course, is active through the whole body. But if after doing that twist, you just actually just tune in to what it feels like in your head as well, you can get used to the fact that this is actually changing the kind of thought process, the kind of spaces in your mind's eye that you're using. 
Maybe there's more space in the prefrontal cortex. It is quite opening. I can feel my, my scalp pulsing. It was surprisingly energetic, if that's even a word. I don't know. But um, this is so much fun. Okay, We must really um, play with these, uh, these protocols in a bit more in the in the hub i think i think what we should do is you know let's round up as we'll carry on playing all day and i i love the the work that you're doing um i've been speaking to other academics and coaches and there's such a conundrum says uh my 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 friends yeah. around how to best engage with activities in the brain and the answer is well you can't you have to engage with the body and um a lot of a lot of coaches don't just know that they, yeah they don't and know that and then and these tools can give them an opportunity to have a felt experience and in that paper we're writing together around getting into the the mind through that somatic experience and how that then leads into understanding the language how that gives us a gateway or a gap into the coaching process anyway i'm rambling on a bit claire this is so much fun you clean clearly hear that i'm i'm rock and roll for this yeah, yeah. It's so exciting and i, I want to make just just make one more point you know the idea of uh so for a start uh, there are certainly 175 pieces of research that underpin my own research. Mm. And there are other heavyweights in the embodiment sector that are doing incredible research as well. So it is an absolutely vital space to be aware mm. of. Mm. Well, what um, is, did, you, did you speak to Mandy about her research? Um, yeah, what, not what? yet. So Amanda Blake oh. is someone who I respect very much and has written a bit brilliant book um, about how the, the 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 body is the brain, and um, you can expect if you come to the mm. physical intelligence hub, you can expect to bump into her. We hope, and um, and me as well, and other coaches and people that are already using mm. embodiment and those that are interested in it. And I think the important thing to say is that. In the somatic world, it, it has it, it it has in the past had a feeling of that may not be accessible because I need to have trained for many years to be a somatic right, practitioner. Right. But actually, my approach, our approach at, at the Physical Intelligence Institute and in the Physical Intelligence Hub here, is that we all have a body, so we need to be able to with some clear simple instructions and tools start to experiment with it in our coaching to unlock greater change faster change more profound change um, uh, but it's not there's no guru status here there is a, there is the fact that we all have a body and through these clear simple mechanisms access greater neuroplasticity with our bodies I've got, I've got, a, I've got a hidden agenda with you, Claire. I, um, with the Institute of Organizational Neuroscience, we are hoping to um, run um, some activities at the conference in Rotterdam, and I really want you to bring your body with to that because organizational neuroscience is well, it's very academic. So you know, maybe we can, maybe we can. Uh, we, 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 we can we can ruffle the feathers together and yeah. anyway i'm getting distracted guys come into the physical intelligence hub there's lots of fun there's lots of activity and claire is going to be guiding us all the way through this exciting uh technology claire thank you so much it's so nice to see you lovely to see you see everyone in the hub thanks claire see you guys soon